Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys about my Honduran Fire Valley Boas. So today I want to do a quick video just discussing the history of these rare Boas, as well as I want to show you some of my holdbacks that I'm growing up for our future breeders. And I'm going to show some close-ups of my babies that were just born here in 2021, so be sure to stay tuned for that. So the Honduran Fire Belly Boa project actually dates back to the mid 90s. And so what happened is the well-known reptile importer Tom Crutchfeld got a shipment of boas from the island of Roatan, which is off the coast of Honduras in the Caribbean. And what characterized these animals is that some of them had this really bright belly coloration, this really bright orangey salmon red color. And in some individuals it actually extended to the sides of the animal. So they were really quite striking looking, very beautiful. So what happened was the Florida reptile breeder Dennis Sargent was able to acquire two pairs of these animals and he picked out the most red animals that he could find from the batch to start his bloodline of hunter and fire belly boas. Dennis Sargent successfully bred them a few years later and established his line, but then he had to get out of reptile breeding, unfortunately, and sell off all of his animals. And so the animals became a lot more rare after that. And so um, there are, I've seen quite a few other types of Central American boas. Uh, from Honduras, even some boas from Costa Rica that have the, uh, a similar reddish coloration. Only the boas that can be traced back to Dennis Sargent can rightfully be called Honduran Firebelly boas. So if you have some similar looking orangey boas from Central America, by all means breed them, but call them something else because you can't call them Honduran Firebelly boas. And so I was really lucky to acquire some of these animals that were bred by Legacy Reptiles, uh, born in 2013. And I successfully bred them in 2018, kept several as holdbacks for myself um, to grow up as future breeders. And so this is one of my favorites from the litter. This is the male that I held back. And this guy is actually one of my favorite holdbacks of any litter. I just think he's such a cool looking animal. And so the father of this litter was mostly patternless. He only had a few saddles. You can see this guy, his neck is pretty much patternless and he's got some saddles in the middle of his body. And then towards his tail is also kind of a striped appearance. Uh, and then he's got the beautiful uh, orangey salmon color on his belly. Uh, his mother was like really super saturated with color. And then uh, just a really cool looking animal. So what else characterizes these animals? Typically they have this dark olive brownish green ground color. And they have these kind of short, almost stubby looking heads as well as these really big kind of orangey brown eyes. Really a unique looking boa. They look similar as far as their body to mainland Honduran boas. They have kind of this really short head. Um, but the fire bellies typically will have this nice orangey coloration. Although I have seen quite a bit of variability in the babies. You know, some of the babies definitely have more of the orangey coloration than others. Others, it's kind of a little bit of orange, but kind of more of a grayish green color. Um, you know, of course it can be selectively bred for. And then some of them have the, um, the, the striped and the patternless appearance. Some of them have more of a regular saddle. So a lot of variability, but I just really like this guy. He's just got a really cool look to him. And you know, hopefully he'll be ready to breed in another year or two. Um, as you can see, they're not a huge boa. They get to maybe five, six feet tops. Um, just a really interesting looking animal. Um, let me show you, I got a couple other females from this litter that I held back. So let me go grab one of those right now. Here's another animal from my 2018 litter. This is a female that I held back. And this female has a more typical appearance with more regular saddles. She doesn't have the uh, striped or patternless. Uh, but I just really like the appearance of this female. You know, really a nice looking animal. Uh, I like the contrast between the, you know, the darker saddles and kind of the olive background color with lots of the, the you know, the pink and the salmon. Uh, then you, you can see her salmon belly. Incidentally, they do develop the color over time. Uh, a lot of the babies aren't as colorful as they'll be as adults, and as they grow, they develop the color. There's also some variability in the coloration. I mean, not all of them have the really intense 
uh, salmon bellies. Some of them um, aren't quite as brightly colored. And then, you know, some of them do have the, the pattern list. So there's a lot of, you know, possible phenotypes to select from with this project, you know, and, you know, we'll have to just see how it goes. But this female is a uh, real nice animal. Um, one thing about these Honduran firebillies that I've noticed, sometimes behaviorally they're a little unusual, like they don't, they act, they definitely act different from some of my other boas. It's not really aggressive. Sometimes they can just be a little moody and hissy, but they don't usually bite. And you know, they'll be kind of acting a little aggressive, but then I pick them up and they're completely fine. Um, just a little bit different, but really cool animal to work with. I have one more female from the 2018 litter that I held back, which is this one. And this one, like my male that I held back, also has a partially patternless, uh, you know, pat pattern. You can see the reduction in saddles. You can see the nice bright belly color. Um, this female, behaviorally, she's a little bit of a challenge, I'll say. She doesn't like to eat freeze-thawed. This is one of my few animals that I have a challenge feeding freeze-thawed. And, you know, even if I dangle it and make it look like it's alive, sometimes she'll strike, but then she'll release. Um, so I've had to continue to feed her a lot of live items, prey items. Occasionally, she will eat a frozen-thawed animal. And you know, another thing that's behaviorally a little challenging with this female is sometimes she'll strike a live animal, she'll constrict it, but then she won't eat it. She's just a little, little temperamental. And she also, sometimes she can act all aggressive, but then sometimes she's fine. And you know, when I take her out, she's fine. So just an unusual animal. And um, after having that litter in 2018, I ended up breeding my female again the following year in 2019, and I, typically I won't breed a female uh, year, you know, in successive years. But she had put back on weight and she looked completely fine, and so the breeding went without you know hitch, and she got gravid and everything looked fine, you know. And I came in to check on her one day. It was about three weeks before her due date, and she had delivered. And unfortunately, it was a little bit early. And I saw this nice litter, I think it was like 12 or 13 babies. And they, they were all nice, fully formed babies, but unfortunately only two were alive. And it was really heartbreaking. So I don't know if it was because she was bred, you know, back to back years, or, you know, maybe it was something else. But, you know, it was really kind of devastating and heartbreaking. Luckily, I had the, the two babies that were, you know, alive, managed to make it, and they went off to you know a new home so i waited a couple years till 2021 to breed my female again and you know everything looked fine and then she actually gave birth a little bit early again it was about two weeks before the due date but fortunately this time all the babies were alive and they all made it and you know they all ate with no hitch and many of them have gone off to their new homes by now i do have a couple holdbacks so I'm going to get out my close-up lens. I want to show you the holdback animals and kind of discuss where I see this project going here at Brian Boas. Now I'm going to show you guys some of the holdbacks from my 2021 20, litter. And I actually just held back a pair, one male and one female. And this is the male. And this guy just really kind of blew me away. You can see he's mostly patternless, even more patternless. And that first male I showed you, and I just love this appearance, this kind of striping down towards his tail. You know, honestly, I'm not really big on a lot of the uh, striped or patternless boas. I really don't like that look in the true red tails. But there's something about these Honduran fire bellies that I think just looks really cool with no pattern, you know, because it's got the bright red, you know, or salmon bellies and sides and the darker uh, dorsal surface. And just really looking forward to seeing how this guy grows and develops. You can see he's just got a few saddles right in the middle of his body. But, but a mostly patternless look. Here's a close-up of the male. And you can see he's not moving around very much. And I found that these Honduran fire bellies, similar to the Tarahumara, they're not a really active boa. So it really makes them easier to photograph and do videos of. You can see at this point, he doesn't have a huge amount of the uh, salmon belly coloration. So hopefully that'll develop in the next few years. But just really looking forward to seeing how this guy develops over that time. And there's a close up of his head and eye. 
just really love the eyes on these animals. They have these beautiful big orangey brown eyes. Really a unique looking boa, the hunter and fire belly boa. Here's the female that I held back and similar to the male, her main defining characteristics are the mostly patternless body and she's got kind of the striping towards the tail. You can see, unfortunately she's in shed right now. There's always at least one boa Every time I try to film a video, there's a boa that is going into shed that I want to use for the video. So just bear with me. So her colors are not as bright as they normally are. But um, you can see this is kind of where I'm taking this project. I just think this striping towards the tail just looks really cool with the, hopefully these sides will get really the nice pink salmon color over time. and see where it goes. You can see this female shows the characteristic really short head shape and there were quite a few other animals from this litter that had kind of a different look some of them had really nice symmetrical saddles and really nice uh, color to the sides I you know like I said before I you know, like all my boas unfortunately I can't hold them all back so some of you guys already have those animals I shipped out a bunch a few weeks ago so hopefully if you got them you you know appreciate them and they'll do really well for you but this female, I just love this striped look, and we'll just have to see where it goes. And there's a close-up of her head showing the kind of short, stout head shape and the real big kind of orangey-brown eyes. Uh, but really, her colors are not looking real great today because she's in shed. You can see her skin looks a little bit loose, especially around her neck. But she'll probably look a lot better in another couple days after she sheds. There's that striped tail right there. Okay, so hopefully that gave you a good appreciation of the Honduran Firebelly boas, in case you were interested in these rare boas from Honduras. And uh, I don't have any readings of these planned in 2022, but hopefully in 2023, I'll have another pairing, possibly including some of my holdbacks from 2018. So be sure to stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, shoot me any questions or comments you may have. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.